Today we're going to be looking at the power consumption of a number of different Arduino boards, with our aim being to try and power them for as long as possible using two 18650 lithium ion batteries. These batteries are 3.7 volts each and come in a range of capacities from 1800 to 4500 mAh. These ones are on the higher end at 4200 mAh, meaning that they can supply 4.2 mA for 1000 hours or 420 mA for 10 hours, or any combination of current and time for which the product is 4200. We're going to be testing the power consumption of six different Arduino boards. I've got an Arduino Mega, an Uno, a Nano, a Pro Micro, and then a 5V Pro Mini and a 3.3V Pro Mini. Most Arduino boards require a minimum input voltage of around 6 volts, so we'll be using two batteries with an input voltage of 7.4 volts to power these boards. I've also included a 3.3 volt board, which is able to run on a single battery. I'm going to be loading a basic sketch onto each Arduino, which has an 8 second delay and then flashes the onboard LED for 100 milliseconds, just to tell us that the sketch is running. This will then just loop repeatedly. The Atmega chips on these boards support a number of different sleep modes, which turns off any unused peripherals in order to conserve power. I'm not going to go into too much detail on how these work, but we'll be using a library which enables you to put the Arduino to sleep for a certain amount of time, or until an interrupt is triggered. So for these boards I'll include two tests, one without the sleep mode, and one in which the Arduino is put to sleep for the 8 seconds between flashes, instead of running the delay. I'll discuss this option a bit later when we look at the difference in power consumption. Let's get started with setting up the test rig. I've connected the two batteries in series and then connected them to my multimeter to measure the current draw. The multimeter is going to be showing the current drawn in milliamps. We'll start off with Arduino Uno since it's one of the most common boards available. This board is designed to be more robust and easy to use than power efficient or compact, so I doubt it's going to do very well in the power test, but let's try it out as a starting point. In each test, I'll allow the current to stabilize for a bit and then record the average current drawn during the delay time. We'll ignore the peak current drawn while the LED is flashed, as this is only on for 100 milliseconds every 8 seconds, which is only around 1% of the on time. On the Uno in normal mode, we get a current draw of 54.4 milliamps, which means it would run for around 77 hours or 3 days on the two 18650 batteries. Now let's load the sleep sketch and see if there's any difference. The current increase when the LED flashes is now more noticeable. So if we use the sleep mode between flashes, the current consumption goes down to 38.2 milliamps. So we expect it to be able to run for around 110 hours or 5 days. Now let's try an Arduino Mega. As expected, the Mega draws a bit more power than the Uno. It draws around 77.7 milliamps, so it would only last for around 54 hours or 2 days. Now let's try low power mode. So in low power mode, an Arduino Mega draws around 31.7 milliamps and would run for around 132 hours or 6 days. Next we have an Arduino Nano. As you can see, the Nano seems to be a lot more power efficient than the Uno or the Mega. The Nano draws around 25.5 milliamps, so we'd expect it to run for 165 hours or 7 days. So we've managed to get a week of battery life. Now let's try the Nano in low power mode. Using the sleep mode sketch, the Nano draws only 6.4 milliamps, so it would run for around 656 hours or 27 days. So we're almost at a month. Let's see if the Pro Micro can get us there. The 
The Pro Micro actually did a lot worse than the Nano. They drew around 43.4 milliamps, so it would only last for 97 hours or 4 days. Let's see if low power mode makes any difference. In low power mode, the Pro Micro drew 9.25 milliamps, so it's much better than the Mega and the Uno, but the Nano is still the most efficient. Next we're going to try powering a Pro Mini. This is a very similar form factor to the Pro Micro, but it has a different chip and the onboard USB host has been removed, so you'll need an external programmer to connect it to your computer. The Pro Mini uses just 19.1 milliamps, which is a little less than the Nano, and means that you'll get around 220 hours or 9 days. Now let's try the Pro Mini in low power mode. If we put the Pro Mini to sleep between flashes, it uses just 3.2 milliamps which means that it'll run for around 1,313 hours, or 55 days. So we're now getting closer to 2 months. Lastly, let's try the 33 volt Arduino Pro Mini, and see if it does better than the 5 volt version. The 33 volt Pro Mini draws substantially less current than the 5 volt version, just 5.5 milliamps which is even better than the Nano in low power mode. So we've seen that it'll run for a month in normal mode, let's see how long it'll run in low power mode. The 33 volt Pro Mini uses just 1.6 milliamps in low power mode, so it'll run for around 109 days, which is a bit over 3 months. Let's see if that changes if we power it with just one battery. Remember that if we're halving the input voltage, we'd expect the current to increase to supply the same amount of power to the Arduino. Strangely, there was actually a slight decrease in the input current. So you'll actually get better battery life by powering a 3.3V Pro Mini on a single 18650 battery. You'll get almost 4 months. So if we look at our full set of results, the most power efficient board in both modes is the 3.3V Pro Mini, lasting almost 4 months on a single 18650 battery. There's also a significant decrease in power consumption when using sleep mode, so you should definitely consider using it if you're designing a battery based project. Now you obviously can't have the Arduino sleeping the whole time, it's actually expected to do something if it's connected up to a project. But on most projects where you'd be looking to power the Arduino using batteries, you're only using the Arduino for a fraction of the time that the system is powered up. For example, if we look at a soil moisture monitor, soil doesn't suddenly dry up in a couple of milliseconds, and even watering the plant takes a minute or two for the water to be evenly soaked up in all of the soil. And your plant isn't going to die if its roots are dry for two seconds. So you realistically only need to take soil moisture readings in minute intervals rather than every couple of hundred milliseconds. So you could have your Arduino sleep for a minute and then take the measurements and then go back to sleep again. The measurements also only take a couple of hundred milliseconds to execute, so your Arduino would be sleeping for most of its on time. Similarly for weather stations, even rapid outdoor temperature changes only change over a number of minutes. So you can set your Arduino to wake up every 5 minutes and take a new temperature and humidity measurement, rather than take measurements on every loop cycle. It's also important to note that there's a difference between putting the Arduino to sleep and simply putting delays into your code. Delays don't stop the Arduino from processing operations, so they just tell the Arduino not to proceed until a certain amount of time has passed. You can think of the two like this. Putting a delay into your code is like having a child ask, are we there yet, are we there yet, are we there yet, over and over again until the answer is yes, and it's able to proceed. Putting the Arduino to sleep is like setting an alarm and allowing the Arduino to do nothing until the alarm rings and it wakes up again. Look out for the next video in which I'm going to try and further reduce the power consumption of a 3.3V Arduino Pro Mini, and see if we can get it to run for over a year on a single 18650 battery. 
Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.